Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Mother Gail Trailer. This is uh, Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, and my name is Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. A little program I put together just in case you forgot to read the word, just forgot to give him glory, you forgot to say thank you. You forgot to ask for forgiveness of sins. You can pray along with me. Shucks, sometimes I forget. But the older I get, with the trials and the tribulations that confront me, I better not forget. He's brought me this far. And by His grace and mercy, He's going to continue to lead me. And I just wanted to share the word and encourage you. Don't give up. Sometimes, aren't you? He's, sometimes I'm smiling because, honey, eyes in warfare to temptations. You know, the things that I would just look back and say, oh, Just to look at other people and then, oh, that would be nice if I could do that. But remember what all that looking back entails? But what does it mean? Do you remember the suffering you did while you was back there? And the bondage? I do. So therefore, onward. I believe sometimes uh, that's the way the Lord allows, you know, like the hedge around Job. He allows that hedge to go down a little bit so the enemy can jump in there. This morning, oh my God, if it had not been for the Holy Spirit, I couldn't have gotten out of the bed. I had this, oh uh, gosh, instead of saying, you know, uh, rejoice a new day. I said, oh, Lord, <laughs> please, <laughs> can I please, <laughs> you know, we'd be begging, please let me sleep, please, and then you notice also, you're, you're, you're not the way, when you are in need of uh, a closer walk, you tend to have um, personality change and uh, I kind of snapped at the husband and uh, I took his word out of context I mean I guess you know I, I just uh, yeah I'm human beat me with a wet noodle and and uh, me and hubby don't we don't get into a, a lot of, you know, uh, difficulties because uh, most of the time, you know, but honey, I had to check myself, what's wrong with you? Huh? Is it your blood pressure? Maybe your sugar? You, you ain't got sugar, but you maybe, hmm. And child, I found out something. But before I tell you what I found out, before I read this word, I'm going to invite you to pray along with me so that we can approach the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. Because we need him. We need him. You know you need him. You get tired. You hear your well doing. Okay? And then we have other uh, folks to pray for. How about those people out in the Bahamas? Could you imagine your whole uh, town washed away? What comes next? You know, you don't have a place to live. Your clothes are wet. All is water. and Then dysentery and, and you have sanitar sanitation problems. And I mean, 
I looked at the news yesterday and, and uh, they were ordered to disembark a ship that was going to a uh, U.S. Oh my gosh, you know? Oh my gosh. Ah, man, you know, there's troubles and there's trials on this earth. But the Lord promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and He won't. We have our troubles, they have their troubles. Their troubles are physical, our troubles are spiritual, but they're troubles. And it looks like, you know, there's an attack, but the Lord disciplines His people, His, his own. I'll tell you what he needs in a minute. Come on, pray with me. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your victories, for your power. And Lord, we thank you for every now and then, Lord, you have to chastise your own So Thank you for letting me know that you still love me. I need a spank now and then. We all need a, 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 a shake. We all need, Father God, an awakening so that we don't take this walk in vain because, Lord, this flesh is always trying to look back at the leeks and the garlics of Egypt and, and, oh, but Lord, we know that the leeks and the garlics were bondage. It was suffering times. It was sad times. But you brought us out and you're taking us through. So we have to fight this good fight of faith. Although the battle is not ours, the battle belongs to you. We'll never make it unless we draw nigh to you. So thank you for that revelation. Thank you for not leaving us, nor forsaking us. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son who suffered, who bled, who died on our behalf. Thank you for our children, our loved ones, our husbands, and wives, and saints, and friends, and pastors, and pastors' families. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for the strength that we see in them. Thank you for the word that they, Lord, encourage us with. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ciao. I kept hearing my pastor talk about fasting. Huh. And I said, I looked at him, he was a young whipping snapper. <laughs> yeah, you go on fast. I used to fast too. I used to fast two and three days, you know? And, uh, you know, that was when I was younger. And uh, now at this age, find that I have to fast. I have to. I have to fast. This flesh will try to don't trust it. That's all I can say. Let me get to the word. Don't trust your flesh. Fast. Okay? I don't know what the doctor told you to take. I don't know. I know what the doctor told me to take. I ain't taking jack. I'm fasting, okay? What's going past these lips today is water, and I ain't bragging and boasting, but I'm telling you, I'm in a battle, okay? And I heard young Clay said something Sunday night in service. You're a disciple. How is your being a disciple, affecting other people, you know? Are you sloppy with your walk? Are you taking your salvation for granted? I see saints. I saw uh, uh, Lady Adams come in there on Sunday, along with the, the grandbaby and, and, and her husband. And I look at them and I know there's a battle going on. And I look because there are times that you don't even, I mean, it gets rough. When you are in, you know, you're being used to God, 
it looks like the enemy takes you personally. And and the Lord does let that hedge go down and you, you become as Job, you know? And and that thing is a, a, a mental fight. And you wanna, I, Sunday I felt like giving up. Mm -hmm. You know what I did? I got on my knees. But still, there's more. Lay down the plate. Deny your flesh. Yeah. You're going to have to come to it sooner or later. You can do it today, the 10th of September. You can do it the 10th of October. But it's coming. You know why? Because your flesh is, is a powerful entity against the Word of God. This is an earthly body. This body wants to, uh, what doesn't it want to do? <laughs> but I got news. My God is with me, and he said he'd never leave me nor forsake me, and he told me to draw nigh to him, and, I would, and he would draw nigh to me, and that's exactly what he does, Holly. Well, let's get into, I can say this, for sure, for sure, for sure. There are things that people write. And um, it kind of gets through to you after a while. You know, like you start, you, you like Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. I found out something. God ain't all out there. He's a prayer away. You can talk to him in the bed, riding up and down the road. You can talk to him just any time you can talk to him. You can talk to the Holy Spirit and tell the Holy Spirit you love him. And you can ask the Lord for the things that you need and just wait patiently. And Jesus. There's so much that we don't ask God for and we don't talk to the Lord about, you know? The Holy Spirit is personal, just like Sarah says. But this is what the Lord told her to write today. And I'm going to read it into your hearing. Trust the Lord. Trust in His Word. I mean, golly gee, golly gee. He's a prayer away. There's quite a few people that wrote about... Um, 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 you know, being close to Christ, you know, that closeness. God's not all out there. You know, you ain't got to get a, down on your to your prayer chair only. If it's not in the vicinity, there's inside of you. This is the temple of God right here. Tabernacle. And all you got to do is call on him. I thank God for Jesus, because we got victory. Well, let me get to it. September 10th, the Lord encourages Sarah to write in her journal. These are her words, the words that the Lord encourages her. He says to her, I am always available to you. Once you've trusted me as your Savior, I never distance myself from you. Sometimes you may feel distant from me. Recognize that as feeling, do not confuse it with reality. Recognize that as feeling. Don't confuse it with reality. You know that feeling that God is not, he's so far away. That's not reality. That's another one of the enemy's lies. Okay? The Bible is full of my promises to be with you always. As I assured Jacob, when he was journeying away from home unto unknown places, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. After my resurrection, I made this promise to my followers. Surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let these assurances of my continual presence 
fill you with joy and peace. No matter what you may lose in this life, you can never lose your relationship with me. Hallelujah. Suppose you were in the Bahamas this morning and you lost your home, uh, some family members, some you know were found, some of them you, you they're still missing. Suppose you lost your everything that was dear to you. Suppose that was you. Pray for those people. Pray for them. And if you can, donate. Uh, Pastor Adams is going to the Bahamas. Him and um, a few other ministers of God. I think he mentioned Noel Jones and um, T.D. Jakes going out to the Bahamas to give, to encourage. Our church has been encouraged to give. And um, they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, that's, that's, that's a trial. That is a test. That is something that they have got to draw close to Christ or lose your mind. Sometimes when we are here without, you know, electricity or when we're here without water, my daughter went without electricity for a couple of uh, hours and that was rough on her. A lot of people were frightened by this uh, storm, Dorian. Uh, things happened. There was flooding, even in North Carolina. You know, Florida was flooding some places a lot of rain and it could have been us but uh, and Lord knows what the future will hold but we know this okay hold on to God's unchanging hand get your focus on him draw nigh to him we get laxed here you know you know we we're marrying giving in marriage and every sunday is a party you know but honey the lord is 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 nigh us and we must stay focused on him and remember whose we are who we belong to Every now and then he'll chastise his own because he loves us. He loves us. Isaiah 54 and 10. I'm going to read Isaiah. And um, let's see what Isaiah said. I love the book of Isaiah. Just lately. It's really, really, really been touching me. The children of the desolate, it says. Hey, but I'm going to start at the eighth verse. In a little while, in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that have, hath had mercy on thee. He promises Israel that mountains will be removed, and, you know, uh, problems will come, waters. You know, the waters of Noah wouldn't have come and overflow the earth. He says that there is going to be, um, 
you know, the hills are going to be removed. The mountains are going to be removed. Things are going to happen. Blessings are going to come and trials will come. And testings will come, but I'm not going to leave you. He promised Israel he would not leave them nor forsake them. And he did not. He kept Israel through the afflictions, through their the trials, through their testings. He kept Israel. He, he was faithful, and he's faithful still. He's faithful to us. Okay? He's faithful. There are times that you and I uh, go through testings just to see where our faith lies, just to see where our focus is. And like Peter, we've got to stay focused. Never mind the, the Kardashians and the, the Mr. Brown and whatever. Oh my gosh, never mind. Man, he's coming back again. I enjoy my life. I really do. I enjoy my work. I enjoy. I love my neighbors. I love my friends. I love my church. But there's a personal walk. Okay? There is a personal walk. And, you know, trials are going to come and go. But just you remember. That he's just a prayer away. And if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. We run out of strength sometimes, you know. Or we got some imaginations. I mean, last week I think I imagined I had a, it was a million dollar movie I had in my mind. About my baby. You know, and, and uh. I could have sold tickets because I had it all, you know, I had all the drama, all the, oh my gosh, and I kind of like panicked a little bit on the inside, but I tried to look cool, but I kind of like panicked on the inside, and do you know none of it, none of those lies came to pass, you know, that cinema's vision and panoscopic that movie, which was, man, it was, it was, it was some movie I printed. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. The other is going to happen. Oh, you need prayer. I, I went to, uh, I got a little disgusted because I was walking in my flesh and I went up to the altar and I had a, a very, very good minister um friend pray for me and there's a lot of them in our bill and he prayed for me and told me the opposite of what i was thinking and talking about somebody got to say yes and i say yes yes to you will because yeah you're in a battle honey this is a battle here that's the enemy's trick to tell us, uh, uh, you're lost, man. You're out here. Your kids are out here. This world is about to take over, and this is happening, and that's going to happen, and you ain't going to make it, and the kids ain't going to make it. Just give it up. Child, please. Draw nigh to God, and then none of it pans out the way you, you dream it's going to pan out. So, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Isaiah 54 and 10. He is a compassionate God. He's compassionate to you and he's compassionate to your children. Okay? Same thing you see in, in your children. That's what was in you when you were younger. Ha! Ha! Don't you love it? <laughs> anyway, let's get to Genesis 28 and 15. God bless you.
I just love, I just love to talk to y'all and tell y'all about my adventures. Because maybe somebody's going through something too. Y'all got grown kids? Yeah. You got babies out there in this world? Ain't it something? We can make up some movies, can't we? I mean, ooh, we could Metro Golden Mayor movies. You know, all this imagination. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know, please, the devil is a lie and his mother-in-law too. Quote Pastor Adams. Uh, Genesis 28. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm going to read from the 13th, and the focal boy verse is the 15th. In the King James Version, it says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. This is when Jacob went to, uh, what did he go to, Pendanaran? Or where, where he went? Uh, no. He he went to uh, get a wife. Yeah, he was sent to Pandanaran. Okay, and he he put those rocks down, and he had he slept, and he uh, had a vision while he was sleeping, and this is what the Lord says: Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord thy God of Abraham thy father. Oh, here we go. Here, let's start from the twelfth verse. And he dreamed, and behold, the ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascended and descended on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed. That's a promise. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall the families of the earth be blessed and behold I am with thee and will keep thee in the, all the places whither thou goest and will bring thee again unto this land but I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of God is not a liar he's not a liar and what he said he will do he said he'd keep us he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He'd be with us until the end of the earth. He said he'd love us, that he'd guide us. He'd send his Holy Spirit. He said he'd hear when we call. He said he'd bless us, bless our children and our children's children. He said he'd bless us going out and bless us coming back in. Bless our basket and our store. He said he'd take us through, through the waters, through the fire. He said he would, and he's not a God that he should lie. Hmm? He's not a God that he should lie. Okay, so Jacob dreamed this dream of this ladder and how the uh, angels were going up and down and, and ascending and descending on it. And the, the Lord stood above it and told him, I'm, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to bless your children. Okay? You, they, you, there's going to be a lot of children come from you. A lot of children. A nation. And uh, he told them, he's going to bring him to that land. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep his word. He's going to keep his word. So, why not trust the Lord regarding your life, regarding my life? And the only way to do it is to draw near to Him. Okay, yeah, you get tired of well-doing. That's when we're slipping out of the, the old, you know, we're slipping out of the spirit and into our flesh. We're looking around and seeing how easy it is for others to get by and to do what they have to do from day to day, but... Those others that we're looking at that are catching our attention, they're not saved. They're in darkness. And what they are doing is, is some of the stuff you used to do. And remember how that fit on you? 
Wasn't it horrible? Wasn't it? Didn't it make you cry? Was it a holy living? No. So we must trust God. I don't care what. Let's not let anything around us disturb us from drawing nigh to God. Thank you. Hubby just came home. What was I saying? We got to trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. When you find yourself getting, uh, how would you say, a little cranky, and you're wondering what the heck is wrong, it's because you have come out of the spirit realm into your flesh. You are trusting in your flesh. And sometimes your physical body can assist you to walk in your flesh because you, you experience pain. You know, there's all kinds of tests. You know, all kinds of tests. Our pastor says when you experience pain all over your body, it's because you're carrying loads that you should not carry. And I agree with him. I agree with him wholeheartedly, 100%. What a battle. You know, it's time to grow up. That's what it is. It's just time to grow up. And that's what some of us are doing. We're just growing up. Let's go to the next verse from Scripture, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. What does Matthew 28 and 20, that's our focal verse, have to say to us? start from the 15th verse. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the 11. What money are we talking about? Oh, that's when Jesus was uh, uh, supposedly taken out of the temple. I mean, out of the um out of that, you know, where they placed him after he had uh, hung on the cross. So um, they they told this lie that uh, the disciples had robbed, you know, robbed the body. But in the 16th verse it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I am with you always. That was Jesus's. A promise to the disciples that's Jesus's promise to us and that's the Great Commission we are to go and he says what teach nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you we are commissioned to go teach we are commissioned to go tell we are commissioned to go make other disciples uh, young people, old people, like myself, sharpen your tools. Um, continue to focus on Him. Let's not get weary of well-doing. Sometimes hymns in our garments come out. Come, uh, hymns get unraveled. And we've got to sew those hymns back up in pants legs for men, in dress hymns, you know, seams for ladies. Hymns and seams come unraveled. This is earth. Okay? We get unraveled. We don't focus as we should all the time. We're like Peter. Yeah, we're gun ho in the morning and sometimes later on and as the uh, 
trials come upon us, we're caught looking elsewhere and we begin to sink. And we wonder why we become irritable. It's because we are trying to uh, walk in our own strength. And God has the strength for us that we need. And we can find him right inside. God bless you. God bless you. Seems like I stayed away a few days and stayed too long when I come visit. But I love you. Yes, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every way. It's time to mature, Gail. It's time to fast and pray. Are you fasting? Yeah, get to it, honey. You're going to do it. You're going to have to do it sooner or later. Because this flesh don't want you to go nowhere. But, but down, and that's where it's going down. Because that's where it came from. From dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return. I'm Mother Gail Trail, and this is Just In Case.